What is going on guys and welcome back to the last episode, the last implement of the nutrition hierarchy. My name is Eric Roberts and I'm a real fitness coach who takes a good amount of pride in providing a non-bullshit, non-promotive source of information and knowledge to you guys to hopefully help reach your fitness goals. Again, I say real because I do work with real people in real life and get real results. I am not this person who is coming at you from my desk sitting here claiming I have helped all these people online when I have no clue what the hell I'm talking about. I do it in real life. I continue to do it in real life, which I believe has a huge, huge impact in the way you go to online training. So with that being said, you guys, again, welcome back to the nutrition hierarchy. If you have not watched the first three videos, please, please, please take your time to go back and watch those. Those are going to give you, honestly, the foundation. Honestly, I could do those three videos and be done, and I would be happy with myself. With that being said, I want to do this video because there are some little added extras here and there that aren't as important, but are still a part of the process, so I do want to go over them. The first three videos are going to cover basically your mindset you should have, the calories you should be eating every single day, which is the most important. The most important part is how many calories you eat, so if you go back and watch that second video, that will be mainly covering calories. And then the third video is going to be a macronutrient breakdown, which again, basically just helps you calculate how many macros you should be eating for the number of calories you should be eating. So if you're eating 1,500 calories, how many grams of protein, fat, carbs should be in those, in those calories. So that's what the third video is about. I hope you guys go back and watch those. It will help you. It will help you get a base, and honestly, it might be all you need. <clears throat> if you want, so excuse me, if you want a little bit extra this is what this video is for. So this is going to be the fourth implement of these micronutrients, meal timing, frequency, yada, yada, yada. yada. I'm going to go over a, a good bit of stuff here, not too much in depth, but I am going to go over and touch on some things that I do get questions on that are a part of the process, but maybe just not as important as the rest of the stuff. So if you have watched the third videos, the, the previous three videos, welcome back. I'm wearing a new shirt again. So this shirt is 400 trillion to one with a little sperm on it, uh, right there, you guys see that. That is the odds of you being born today and watching this video right now. This is from my guy, Gary Vaynerchuk. He's the man. This shirt represents the odds of being born. So if you're having a shitty day, if you have problems, if you're complaining about something, these are the odds of being born and watching this video here today. So if you need something to pump you up, this is really all you need. With that being said, let's talk about some of the micronutrients, the meal timing, meal frequency, you know, eating carbs after 6 p.m., pre- and post-workout meals, nutrients, all that kind of stuff. Let's start with the micronutrients. And what I have noticed as far as the micronutrients go, nine times out of ten, if you are following, you know, the first three videos, if you're following your calories, if you're following your protein, if you're following your carbohydrates, your fat, if you're following those numbers to hit your calories every single day, nine times out of ten, the micronutrients are going to fall right into place, you know. Your, your potassium, your sodium, magnesium, calcium, vitamin D, all that kind of stuff is going to fall right into place. With that being said, if you want to learn more about it, this is why this video is going to happen. So I first want to talk about sodium, magnesium, potassium. Those are going to be three very, very critical parts of your hydration, right? So especially if you guys are working out, especially if you know if you're if you're sweating when you work out and you're you're getting a good sweat, you go on a run, you do some type of high intensity animal training, cardio, whatever it is, being hydrated is gonna do very it's gonna do wonders for you guys. Not only in the working out, but just in regular regular life. Like your body needs to be hydrated for you guys to function properly. And honestly the more you are hydrated, the less hungry you'll be, the, the less cravings you'll have. The less need you'll want to go out and, and binge eat, all that kind of stuff. So hydration is a huge factor, and it's not just the water. A lot of people, myself including, just try to pound water, pound water, pound water. Like they try to have, you know, eight ounces with every meal. They try to get a, a gallon a day, and you know, like that's awesome. That's cool. But what I've seen is like nine times out of ten, again, people's problem is not drinking water. It's getting the adequate, adequate nutrients within that to help you stay hydrated, not just your water. And honestly, if you drink too much water and don't get enough of these right here, then your hydration is actually going to suffer, believe it or not. Like if your pee, this is going to be getting into information here. If your pee is clear, that's not good, guys. That's that's not really the way it should be. It should be like almost like a lemonade. Like you guys should be having not clear pee because that means you're just flushing everything out of your system. Like you guys are flushing all this sodium potassium, magnesium out of your system, so you're not staying hydrated. And that's going to cause a problem for you guys when you're working out, when you're walking around with your kids, when you're playing with your kids, when you're going to work, when you're coming home from, like, it's going to cause problems. So 
With that being said, I really want you guys to focus on trying to get these in throughout the day. And getting these in throughout the day is gonna is it's gonna help you guys a lot. I promise you, it's gonna help you not be as full, especially if you're dieting. Help you be full. I'm sorry, especially if you are dieting. Like the less hungry you can be, the better, right? So like. Get these things in check and it'll help you, I promise. Let's talk about sodium first and foremost, which is basically just salt. Again, I don't want to sit here and, and I'm not a doctor. I, I don't want to really go into that. But I will say that salt is not going to kill you. It is not the devil. You especially need it if you're working out hard, if you're exercising, if you're sweating hard. If you have high blood pressure or you know hypertension, like you know this and that kind of stuff, I'm not a doctor. I'm not telling you to do anything with that. Go to your doctor for that. With that being said, you still do want some sodium in your diet. And how much sodium is acceptable? Again, not a doctor, so please, you know, don't show doctors this or whatever it is. But like, how much is acceptable can vary so much depending on the person, depending what kind of workouts you're doing, depending how you know active you are, all that kind of stuff. A good range, I would say, is anywhere from two to five grams a day. So let's write that right here: two to five grams per day. Okay. So that should be a good place to start for you guys. Again, if you're if you're eating, you know, whole nutrient dense foods, if you're getting a, a good amount of protein, if you're, you know, sticking to your carbs and your calories and your fats, all that kind of stuff, nine times out of ten, you guys are gonna fall somewhere within that range. So I wouldn't be too worried about it. But if you if you're noticing you're a little bit dehydrated, if you're noticing you're not recovering from your workouts as well, maybe take a look at your sodium and see what you're doing. And you know, a way to add sodium is always just Salt your meals a little bit. Add a little bit of salt to your meals. Nothing crazy. You don't have to like, you know, pour the whole goddamn thing on it. But like, salt a little bit of your meals and see how you feel from there. Just kind of just track. Magnesium, again, it can vary so much depending on everybody's, you know, everybody's personal needs and, and wants and all that. But like, a good range, again, is anywhere from three to 500 milligrams a day. So, 300 to 500 milligrams a day. <clears throat> And then where do you get this from? Personally, my favorite, I don't really care if you like vegetables or not, you need vegetables, but my favorite is spinach. That, that is my most favorite way to get, uh, get magnesium. It's a great source for magnesium. It's super easy to eat, super available, super, super, it, there's just so much to it that makes it so simple. Like I literally just throw it in my, in my egg omelet in the morning and like, bam, I, I have, you know, some in the morning and some at night and I'm good to go. I hit my magnesium for the day. It helps keep me hydrated. It helps keep me going. Like on top of the fact, you know, it, it helps keep me a little bit full. So with that being said, magnesium, just get it from your spinach guys. And there's a bunch of things out there you can research, but spinach is my favorite way to get it. And it's super simple, super easy, readily available, all that kind of stuff. And the last one is going to be potassium. So how much a day is going to depend on, again, your person, but let's give a range of 2.5 to 3.5 grams a day, okay? So 2.5 to 3.5 grams a day. Um, as a lot of you know, like, you know, bananas have uh, potassium. One that people don't know or maybe they're not, not aware of or they don't want to be aware of is potatoes. That is, like, by far the best source of potassium. Sweet potatoes, white potatoes, whatever it is. It is a great source of potassium. So if you guys can have maybe one potato a day or a half a potato with a banana or whatever it is, like, like I said, you guys are more than likely going to fall within this range and you're going to be more than good to go. So that's covering your hydration part of it. Again, yes, drink your water, but what I've seen, most people don't have a problem drinking water. So that way, if you can just kind of make sure you're within these ranges, you should be good to go. One other thing I want to talk about, well, two, but... Calcium, right? I hear a lot of people saying that they don't want to eat dairy. Like, you know, they try to stay away from dairy. Their, their doctor told them dairy's bad. Like, you know, they some people might be lactose intolerant, so they can't have dairy. So it's like, if you can't have dairy, then probably try to take some calcium. There is other ways to get it, but like, calcium is very important. So think about taking, you know, an, an extra supplement of calcium. If you're not allergic to dairy and you can have calcium, I see no problem with you having, you know, a Greek, two, one or two Greek yogurt today or some cheese a day, or uh, some whole milk a day, whatever it is. Like, Dairy is not going to kill you if it's not going to kill you, right? So focus on keeping your Greek yogurts, your cheese, your, your whole milk, all that kind of stuff. And make sure if you do get the Greek yogurt, it has the you know 2% whole fat milk or whatever it is in there. Um, so that's on the calcium side of that. Vitamin D is another one that I see a lot of time people are usually very, very low in, including myself. Uh, kind of white. I don't know if you guys can see I'm, I'm white, so it's like I'm pretty low, or I was pretty low in vitamin D. What I started doing was, 
I don't know, go outside. So what I started doing was I take about 10,000 IUs a day. Um, so I was at about 32. If, if you guys go to the doctor and get your blood drawn, the vitamin D range is within 30 to 100, you know, 100 IU or 100. That's basically the range, 30 to 100, right? So with that being said, I was at about 32, I believe, so pretty low. I started taking about 10,000 IUs a day, and I slowly started to get that number back up, right? So I don't, you know, you don't have to take 10,000 IUs a day, but if you do want to supplement some vitamin D, if you if you live in a, you know, live in an area that's not that sunny or, or you don't get outside that much or you know whatever it is. Supplement some vitamin D, maybe 5,000 to 10,000 I use a day, and just kind of go from there. Um, if you do that, your numbers will probably go up. If you do get your vitamin D up, I have noticed, like, you'll start feeling better. You'll have some more energy. You'll normally sleep better at night. So that could be maybe something you guys could look into. So with that being said, as far as covering the main kind of micronutrients I want to talk about, I do want to get into, you know, meal timing, meal frequency, how often should you eat, how often should you not eat, all that kind of stuff. So one, the thing I'm going to say is, it really doesn't matter that much. Like, I mean, it's not going to make or break you. Whether you eat every two to four hours, whether you eat every eight hours, it's not going to make or break you. But the thing I will say is, I have seen that when people try to, when people try to fast or they don't eat for long periods of time or this and that, it is harder to hit your calorie goals for the day. Like, it is a lot harder if you have to eat fifteen hundred calories or sixteen hundred calories a day. Getting that between a meal or two meals. It's, it's hard. It's normally not going to happen. Like, that's why you hear, like, you know, every two to four hours, have a meal, have a smaller meal, or this and that. And that's great, but some people don't like those smaller meals. And what I'll say to that is, like, okay, like, have three meals a day, but you got to make sure at the end of the day, what we know we already talked about is you have to hit your calories. Your calories have to be hit. No matter how they're hit, you should, you should hit your calories. With that being said, what I've seen is if you if you try to spread your meals out throughout the day, whether it's three meals, four meals, five meals, six meals, whatever it is, if you spread your meals out throughout the day, more times than not, that's going to be the best option for you because it'll keep you in a routine. It'll keep you on track. It'll also help keep your blood sugar level stable. Like if you don't eat from like, you know, six in the morning to six at night, those blood sugar levels are going to drop very, very drastically. So with that being said, when those blood sugar levels drop and you try to eat dinner at night, you're probably fucking starving. One, two, you're either starving or you're not hungry at all. So that creates a problem both ways. If you don't want to eat, then you're not going to hit your calories. If you do eat, you're going to eat way too much. And instead of eating 1,500 calories, you're going to eat 2,500 calories because you had your dinner with Halo Top ice cream, with regular ice cream, with that cookie on the table. And so it's like that's when you start seeing some problems. So that's just where you have to like – just because you hear somebody does intermittent fasting, that doesn't mean it's right for you. It, it's not an end-all, be-all. All, all, this, all this intermittent fasting and this, and this keto and like all this kind of stuff, it's like you guys have to figure out what works for you. If, if fasting does work for you and you have like a really busy schedule and like you don't want to eat when, you know, a certain amount of time, like cool, that's perfect. Like, I have nothing against that. What I am saying is don't do it just because you saw somebody else doing it or you heard some, some favorite celebrities doing it or this and that. That's, that's not going to help you guys. It's not your, you're not them. You're not in their body. They're not in your body. You have to find out what works for you. And again, what I've seen just from coaching people is more frequently throughout the day, you know, anywhere from three to five meals, that's going to be your sweet range. That's going to be your sweet spot. That way you can kind of give yourself a routine for the day. It'll help you kind of keep you accountable. It'll help keep you stable throughout the day, not just kind of binging here and there when you do eat. So that's what I want to say about that. Honestly, again, it's not that big of a deal as long as you get your calories, but to hit those calories more times than not, three to five meals a day is kind of where you want to be. So, one other big thing I want to talk about is eating after 6 p.m. And I really, really love this because I'll have people who come to me at like, you know, 6.30 or 7 o'clock at night and we're working out, right? We're working out, you know, we get done at 7.30 or 8, whatever it is. And they, I go to them and say, all right, what's for dinner? Like, whoa, 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 big guy. Like, you know, it's fucking 8 o'clock. There's no way I'm eating now. Like, dude, it's, all that's going to get stored as fat if I eat after 6 p.m. And I'm just like, looking for a weight so I can smash myself in the head with it. I'm like, no, like, no, no, no. Just because you eat after 6 p.m., if you have a fucking, if you have an apple, uh, apple, sure. If you have an apple and it's, I don't know what that is, 124 calories. If it's, a, if it's 124 calories at 6 p.m., it's going to be 124 calories at 8 p.m. or 6.01 p.m. It doesn't matter what time you guys eat this food. A calorie is a calorie is a calorie. There, it's all the same measurement. Just because you eat later doesn't mean it's a different calorie amount. It's not going to automatically make you fat. What will happen is if you eat after whatever, 6, 7 p.m. and you get up the next morning and you check your scale. So if you eat at like 
10 p.m. and you wake up at 4 and check the scale and you're like, you know, your weight's up, that doesn't mean you gain fat overnight. That, that doesn't mean you gain weight overnight. What, does, what it does mean is that your body just hasn't completed the digestion process yet. It takes time for your body to digest food. That's why like eight hours of sleep, like that's kind of the normal time. Like if you go to bed at 10 and you wake up at six, like your digestion for that last meal is probably right around almost done. Like, you know, so that's why if you see people, if you hear people talk about what, you know, I don't eat at night because I'll wake up and I gain weight. It's like, no, 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 you didn't gain weight. You didn't gain fat. You might have a little bit of extra water, a little bit more food in your stomach. That doesn't mean you gain fat. Weight and fat are weight are two different things, guys. Weight and fat, two different things. So eating after 6 p.m. will not kill you. It is not It is not going to make you fat. None of that stuff, guys. And then the last thing I want to touch on here is pre- and post-workout meals. And this is something that can actually make a huge difference for you guys. It, it, it can make a huge difference because it can change the way you feel during your workout and it can change the way you recover after your workout, which is two pretty important things, you know, in my opinion, two very important things that you guys can kind of look at to help you with your training because I know I haven't talked about training in this nutrition hierarchy because it's a nutrition hierarchy, but training is a huge part of everything we talked about. And if you can if you can have really good workouts and then recover really good from your workouts, you're you know taking steps in the right direction. That's where you want to be. So pre-workout. Let's talk about pre-workout meals. Pre-workout meals should be centered around some source of protein and some source of carbohydrates. So like you know, for example, I'll tell some people like, you know, if they're driving home from, or if they're, if they're about to come home from work, like, shit, have a Greek yogurt, have like, you know, maybe one or two pieces of, of toast, and then have, you know, maybe like a cheese stick or something like that. It's like, you need protein, you need some carbohydrates to fuel that workout. You don't want to go into a workout with no fuel. That is, that is not good for anybody. Your blood sugar levels are going to be really low because your body is demanding fuel and you don't have fuel to give it. So it's going to go one way when it's supposed to go the other way. And that's going to make you, you know, blood sugar's low. You're going to get dizzy. You're going to get tired really quickly. You might fucking pass out. Like, it's just not a good thing. So what I would advise is eating an hour or two beforehand and then also having a mix of protein and carbohydrates, whatever that is. Like, one of my favorites, like, I do, like, protein powder with Rice Krispies. Like, it's awesome. And whole milk because, you know, I want to gain weight. So, like, the whole milk with the Rice Krispies and the protein powder. That gives me a great source of carbohydrates and protein right there, baby. Like it's super simple. So like anything an hour or two beforehand for your workout with a mix of protein and carbohydrates is going to help you get some energy during your workout, but also sustain it during your workout. Because if you have that, if you have that protein, it's, it's, it's going to satisfy you. So you're not going to be hungry during your workout. But when you get those carbohydrates, it's going to give you that energy to do the workout and it's going to give you energy to last the workout. So I would, I would highly recommend... Pre-workout is going to be a mix of ah, is going to be a mix of protein and carb, and it's going to be funny because when we go to post-workout, it's going to be more or less sorry, it's going to be more or less the same thing. So post-workout is definitely when you guys can have some carbohydrates. This is the best time to have carbohydrates throughout the day. Like I, if you watch the previous videos, I talked about my pixie sticks. This is the best time where if you want to have go have some carbohydrates, if you want to maybe even cheat a little bit, like this is the time to have it because it will help you recover from your workout. When you finish your workout, your body needs to, to spike that insulin so it can recover from the work you just did. It will help you push nutrients to your muscles. It will help your body calm down and recover from the workout. So post-workout, you definitely want to have a source of carbohydrates. Best time to have them. Other than that, again, I would get some protein. That will slow down the absorption a little bit, but with that being said, it's not a huge deal if you're not a competitive bodybuilder or something like that. So I would advise getting definitely carbohydrates post-workout and then some protein post-workout as well. That's why you see the protein shakes. You know, a lot of them have some carbs in them. Some don't, but a lot of them have some carbs in them to help you recover from that workout you just did. So getting back over here. Oh, with that being said, that's about it, guys. So just to recap, hydrated, please stay hydrated. Um, the ranges are there. So if you fall within those, if you're following your macronutrients and your calories, you're probably going to fall within those. So don't worry about it. Calcium, vitamin D, you might need to supplement those, especially if you're lactose intolerant. And if you don't get outside a lot, it will help you. Fasting, you know, intermittent fasting, or should you eat every two to four hours or yada, yada, yada. Not a huge deal, guys. Please don't stress over it. Please, please, please don't stress over it. I see so many people that are like, well, you know, I don't know if I should intermittent fast or if I should eat every two to four hours. So I'm just not going to do anything. I, I, I need to know the perfect answer. It's like, no, you, 
There is no perfect answer for you. There is no perfect answer. You guys are going to have to start something, stick to it, and then find out what's quote unquote perfect for you. You might, you know, you might do fasting for two weeks and then realize like, hey, this, this shit doesn't work for me. I don't feel good during my day. I have no energy for my workouts. I don't like it. I want to go back to eating, you know, three meals a day. Perfect. I, oh, wonderful. Please go back to eating three times a day. As long as you hit your calories, you'll be good to go. With that being said, same kind of thing. Eating after 6 p.m. does not make you fat. If you have an apple after 6 p.m., that's, you know, if you have, if you have an apple at 559, that's 124 calories. At 601, it's going to be 124 calories. So eating at night does not make you fat. It does not make you gain fat. What may happen if you wake up a little bit earlier than usual, your body has not finished the digestion process, which means you might have still have some food in your stomach, some water retention, which will say, you know, you gain weight, but you didn't gain weight. You didn't, you didn't gain fat. It's just, you know, you have more stuff in your stomach. So please don't stress out about that either. Again, another thing I hear just because people don't want to start, they, they, they have to, they're trying to be perfect as opposed to being consistent. And that's something I'm going to finish with and we'll talk about it in a second, but please don't freak out about that. And then again, pre and post workout, pre workout, again, have a mix of protein and carbs, right? So that's going to get you to the gym. That's going to help you with your workouts, can help your fuel. You're going to feel better. You're going to be stronger. You're going to have more fuel for the workout. Post workout, great time to have carbohydrates and also a good time to have protein as well. So with all that being said, guys, one thing I do want to wrap up with, which I touched on, is everything that I just talked about in these last four videos, you do not have to be perfect. I expect not a single one of you, including myself, to be perfect. It's asinine to think, and it's not realistic. What I do expect you to do is be consistent. I talked about in the first video, when people, quote unquote, mess up, where they have a one bad meal, or they have one bad day, or one bad weekend, or whatever it is, that doesn't mean you lost all your progress. I want to ask you guys, if you are somebody who's looking to gain 30 pounds, did you gain all those 30 pounds in one weekend? Did you gain all those 30 pounds in one meal? No, it took time. This is the same thing. Just because you have one bad meal doesn't mean you lose all your progress. Just because you have one bad weekend doesn't mean you lose all your progress. What it does mean is that you need to get right back on track because being consistent over a long period of time is much more important than being perfect. Consistency is always better than perfection. And what happens from consistency is, it's almost like motivation and discipline. Motivation gets you started. Discipline is what actually matters. Discipline makes sure that week after week after week, when you you might really want a fucking donut, or you really might want to go out and drink tonight with your friends, which, you know, I don't, that's a whole different topic. But the thing is, you need guys need to be disciplined, even when you don't want to be, even when it's hard. Like, be consistent week in and week out, week in and week out, and I promise you guys, I swear to you guys, you're going to see results. Because consistency always beats perfection. If you're, you know, 80% of the time perfect, or if you're 80% of the time correct and 20% of the time you mess up a little bit over a span of, you know, six to eight weeks, you're still going to see results, guys. It might not be, you know, as quick as you want it to be, but again, that's not what this is about. This is about a long-term change. This is about changing for the rest of your life, changing how your body functions, changing how you think mentally, changing how your behavior is, what you decide, what you don't decide to do. I had one of my clients, one of my online clients tell me that, for the past 15 years, she's gone to a 7-Eleven and grabbed a Coke and a Snickers bar. And as much as I like, you know, I'm like, uh, fuck that. Like, I get it. Like, I understand if you don't, if you don't know any better, if you don't, if you don't want to make that change yet, then you're not going to do it. But something cool happened this past couple of weeks. And that is she went in there, grabbed those things again. She, and then she put them back. She put them back and she said, I don't want these anymore. I don't want to live this life anymore. I immediately put them back got a water and an apple. And that's something that now she's done that every single day since that happened. And it's like, if you guys can change those habits for the rest of your life, think about where your body's going to go. It might not change in a week. You, you might not lose, you know, five pounds in a week, but in a span of a year, like your habits are going to be completely different. Your body is going to be completely different because you're stacking up these, these, these habit changes, these behavior changes over a long period of time, which is going to help you reach your goal, not only in aesthetics, but life goals, lifestyle changes, all that kind of stuff. So I hope, I hope, I hope these four videos help you guys. I really, really do. If you have any questions on them, if you have, if you hit shit, if you have one that you want me to go more in depth on, if you have a topic you want me to cover even, even more, whatever it is, please feel free to reach out to me. Also, please try to recommend these videos to your friends, family, coworkers, whoever it is, people in the gym, you know, 
I want people to know the real truth. I want people to know what is actually going on, get some real information. That's the whole reason I'm doing this. It's more like a movement than it is like just a video. Like I want people to to get a non-promotive, you know, non-bullshit source that they can rely on, that they can go to to learn some fitness information that they can help for themselves, and then you know, kind of tell others because like a lot of this is like word of mouth. Like you know, you're somewhere in the gym doing keto, and then you want to do keto. It's like if you, you know, if you tell someone in the gym like, hey, you know, I'm doing a caloric deficit, but I can still eat carbs and I can still feel great and I can do this and that. People are going to pick up on that. They're going to pick up on that and be like, well, you know, how are you doing that? Well, you know, go watch this video. Watch this video. It'll help you. And it's like stuff like that is kind of what I'm talking about here. So if you can do that, that would only help people more. So I would greatly appreciate that because that's what I want to do with this is I want to help people. So if you watched all four of these, thank you so, so, so much for watching all four of these. I really do appreciate it. I really do appreciate trying to, you know, I want to help you guys. So that's why I'm doing these. If you want to reach out to me, please feel free. I make sure no question, no comment like that goes unanswered. It might take me, you know, it might take me some time to get back to you, whatever it is. But I make sure that if you're going to reach out to me, I'm going to take time to reach back out to you. So thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoy these. And until next time, I'll see you guys.